nanohub.org. Online simulation and more for nanotechnology. So welcome to session number two of the recit recitation series that I'd like to present semiconductor teaching tools. I'd like to start out with the NanoUp homepage. Again, we have a variety of uh, missions, if you will, to really mo infuse modeling and simulation into communities. Uh, we're going to talk about le learning and teaching, and that's the focus of today. But we also support software development and ultimately sharing these tools and teaching materials and lectures on NanoHub. So those are the, if you will, uh, four different agendas we have within NanoHub. And um, within the learning and teaching, we have a couple of different items. Um, our key element is really modeling and simulation. So we created something called simulation powered curricula. But we have, uh, have other education materials as well in courses and lectures. But if you click on these simulation powered curricula, what you have is really a set of courses that are overviewed here on the left that um, are really geared for an assembly of different tools that you might be using in classes. And today we'll talk about understanding semiconductors. And that is the group we're really focused on, and that is this abacus group. So if you're really getting engulfed with it, you might just uh, type group slash now abacus as in here. And you'll get to this group. Abacus is, as I mentioned last week, really geared towards teaching a fundamental semiconductor device class. It could be undergrad or graduate course. These materials have been used in a couple, um, let me, I would say hundreds of classes actually concretely on Abacus, uh, on where you uh, start out with crystals and you develop band structure models, you talk about bulk semiconductors, and you typically introduce PN junctions. Some people introduce bipolar junction transistors. Um, we do at Purdue. And then you typically dive into MOS capacitors as a start for an MOS device, and then ultimately MOSFETs. So today, I want to focus on these PN junctions. And we have really um, uh, a PN junction lab on NanoHub, and there's two versions of that. It really is driven by the same engine. Uh, under the hood, uh, it's actually using uh, an industrial strength uh, simulation engine called Padre that we uh, received as a donation gift uh, from Bell Labs. Padre used to generate um, the designs for larger scale transistors in the late 90s for Bell Labs and Aguirre. And uh, let me dive into this Abacus tool. So if you click on here, um, I'm sorry, let me go back one more time. So, so there's a variety of um, homework assignments that are associated with uh, the PN Junction Lab already for US faculty members. Um, but I also wanted to highlight, um, if you go to this uh, overview page here of Abacus, you can get to the Abacus tool itself. So this group page is really trying to bundle information. And then we've uh, really started to fill in a faculty only page where um, you as faculty members can request uh, access. So this is in general not open. And on this page, if I uh, open it in a second view, uh, we have a, um, again, a highlight of the tools, but we also have begun to assemble homework and project assignments for these various tools. So, so these uh, are uh, assembled here, and we are going to work on providing you with the solutions as well. Typically, we're, we're posting the uh, project and homework assignments, but ultimately, we want to guide or guard at least a little bit the solutions to these problems. So we limit the access to this particular group. All right, if I go back to the Abacus page here, I click on the tool suite, what happens is I'm launching Abacus to the tool suite. It's a publication on NanoHub. Uh, it has versions, um, so we updated one recently. There's authors, and actually these tools on NanoHub, we have about 700 plus of them now on NanoHub. 
actually being cited in the web of science as a proper publication. So if you actually were to use them for research, you can cite them properly in a, in a research publication. So uh, you have to be logged in um, on uh, NanoHub. It's a free account. Your students can get a free account as well. Um, you launch this tool here. You get a little bit of a spinning wheel. And um, here we go. This is a, a shell um, that is really um, uh, an assembly of different tools. So this is sort of a splash page of the different tools that are embedded in Abacus. It doesn't look very pretty right now. I used to have a nice, um, nicer image of this, but at least here now I can actually click on these various tools. And as you can see, we have the Crystal Viewer, which was the subject of discussion last week. We have a periodic potential lab and band structure formation through transmission. I'll talk about that next in the next week. And today I want to talk about PN Junction Lab, where we have an interactive version of the tool and we have the, the older traditional version that is uh, in this shell. So um, if I click on, I can also list these tools here and get the same if I just click on the list or I can click on the icon here. Either way works. So if I click here, what will happen? It will uh, launch actually a, a Jupyter notebook, and that takes a, a little time. So I'm going to go back here and see. It says it, it opens in a in a new viewer. If I go here and click on the older version, it launches uh, the older PN Junction Lab inside Abacus. And um, there's a couple of homework assignments here on this tab that you can download, They're easily reachable, or you can find these assignments as well uh, from the faculty page as well. So this is how PN Junction Lab shows up. Um, as I mentioned, it, PN Junction is powered by Padre under the hood, which is really a Bell Labs tool. Um, all right, so here is PN Junction Lab inside Abacus. And um, it has some pre-defined uh, parameters. I, I want to show you a three micron symmetric uh, PN junction that is also doped symmetrically. So I can change these parameters just by clicking on them. I hit simulate. And it's running the simulation. And chances are somebody ran this already, like me. And it's just pulling in a cached result. Um, so here you would see a, um, a band edge diagram. You can pull up other things like a band edge diagram under applied bias. So now this is a sequence of results. And you really see as I'm applying a forward bias, I'm lowering uh, the barium from, say, the uh, N side to the P side. And at very high biases, you can even also see how you have a resistive drop, so the, the non-ideality of the of the wire. So also in the middle, you see the intrinsic level, and you see also see the quasi Fermi levels for the electrons and the holes. And of course, at zero bias, you see one Fermi level. Now uh, we have a new. Um, um, graphical version of the same tool that's actually querying the same data from the back end. It looks more modern. Uh, it runs in a Jupyter notebook. It just takes a little longer to launch. And that's why I, I um, prefer one over the other sometimes for demos, etc. The cool thing is when you launch this, it comes up immediately with some simulation results. You can change the simulation results just like I did uh, in the previous tool as well, so you get the same type of parameters, um, but you get an immediately an interactive visualization. And here, these are really the same results in a slightly different graphical representation that looks a little bit more modern and not like an X11 application. Um, what's kind of cool is you can now explore easily with a click of a button without a pull down menu. The, the, for example, here's the IV curve. There's nothing fancy about an IV of a PN junction. There's a CV uh, characteristic if you cover junction capacitances, etc. What's really 
uh, interesting here is the charge density to look at. And for so this is really the net charge density. So you have the depletion region here in the middle of the device. And for educational purposes, we actually plot in as well the analytical depletion region approximation uh, for you to compare against. So that's the typical square distribution of charge in a PN junction. And now as you apply a bias, you can see how the depletion region gets narrower and narrower. And also you'll eventually see how from a numerical simulation, it gets less and less like a square distribution. And um, for very high biases, it gets really narrow and you have to actually take care of resolving these charge peaks well. And this is what the tool does. Um, so along with that, you can, this is the net charge density. So let me ramp this back here to zero bias. And as in any good cooking show, I put one in to the oven already for uh, doing a reverse bias. So I just set the bias here to minus 0.6. And if you're familiar with uh, drift diffusion type simulations, they really want to start from a zero bias structure. So um, you want to start from equilibrium and then apply a finite bias uh, for convergence regions, the reasons. So that's a typical setup, and it's comprehended in here that it really allows you to look at one bias direction. So now I'm ramping up the negative voltage, and you can see how the barrier gets larger. And um, the Fermi levels look uh, a little bit different, the quasi Fermi levels in the gap, and I can uh, talk about that a little bit. These really depend also on the assumed. Uh, um, uh, carrier lifetimes, minority carrier lifetimes, and we can change those. I'll show that in, a, in another simulation here. And let me ramp this back down and show you the, um, the charge density again here. Uh, again, we start from zero bias where we have the depletion region approximation, and then we increase the bias further and further. And here in this reverse bias direction, you see nicely how this remains uh, rather smooth and square. Of course, not quite square, and it's rounded off at the edges, but there's nothing really surprising here as you uh, increase a, a large negative bias. Uh, the IV characteristic does show a, a dependence that is uh, is non uh, is not flat, so there's a voltage dependence on the current. CV characteristic looks um, pretty uninteresting. There's not much happening either. So if I go back into the forward bias direction that I had just shown you, uh, and here's a bandage diagram like this. So there's of course an uh, electrostatic uh, field built in here. There's an electric field that you can plot. And you can see how as you increase the, the bias, the forward bias that the electric field gets uh, smaller and smaller. And um, of course, the barrier gets smaller, ultimately integrated. There's some uh, uh, non-monotonic behavior here at the junction edge, um, but let's not worry about that too much. Um, the, I showed you the charge density. I want to also show you the total charge. It's a slightly different plot. And this is really plotting the doping, the electron, and the hole densities. I'm going to try to zoom in here because this is yeah, not quite on a good scale. So here is uh, the doping on the P side, the doping on the N side, and it goes to nothing. And that's why there's a, a strangeness here about the scale, which we should fix. I mean, this doesn't look all that good. Let me zoom in a little bit more here. And now you see the here is the hole density that is approaching the doping level on the P side. And here's the electron density that is approaching the, uh, the doping on the N side. And as you make the um, uh, positive bias larger, you're pumping in more minority carriers onto the other junction size. And uh, really you make the depletion region narrow as we discussed. So you really add more charge and you're really injecting electrons on the on the P side, and that is what you nicely see here. 
still orders of magnitude lower, so three orders down, but this will also affect then your, your firm, quasi Fermi level. So you can start looking at those kind of effects this way. And if I do the same thing in the reverse bias direction, um, you see something also interesting. So I'm looking at the total density. I'm gonna have to do my same um, thing here on zooming in. And I'll zoom in a little bit more. And now I'm gonna do the same thing in reverse bias. And um, you'll see how you deplete the minority carriers, but then they start to be somewhat pegged in the depletion region. And there's a non-monotonic behavior that is ultimately related to the carrier relaxation that is happening in the depletion region that is ensuring that n times p equals an i that is constant. <clears throat> and it, it's related to the recombination rates in the pn junction. So I showed you this, uh, this here in, um, in the new interface. And of course, you can do all of this also in where did you go? Here you can also do all of this here in this interface where, um, let me run, oh, it's here, yeah. This is what I ran. If I, for example, then, so I showed you this forward bias, same thing like this. And if I want to go in the environment and put in a negative voltage here, and I run this, it should run pretty fast. Or as I said, somebody like me has run this already. It just loads in a cached result. We can put in some other numbers to see how fast this runs. This runs about 30 seconds or so, maybe less. And um, so I can look again in the bandage diagram here under bias, and I see the same type of curve. Now, if you have a more advanced class, where you talk about carrier uh, recombinations, etc. We can look in this um, in this reverse bias here, and a standard minority care lifetime of ten to the minus ten is taken. If you had a device that had really fast, really, 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 really fast recombinations, you would think that the Fermi, quasi Fermi levels will pretty much collide uh, in the depletion region. So I'm running this right now. And it looks like it, this simulation nobody has run. So it's actually pulling it, I hope. Yeah, so it's actually running the PN junk, uh, the Padre tool and uh, assembling the data. And if I now look at the energy band diagram like this, you should see that the Fermi levels basically collapse. So there's so much um, recombination um, and generation in this case, actually in the junction that these quasi Fermi levels are colliding. So the flip side is if I make this pretty small, let's make something ridiculously uh, long, sorry. That means um, that there hardly is any recombination generation generation in this case uh, in the junction. Um, you should see something quite the opposite in the quasi Fermi levels. And that is somewhat different than what you might see in some textbooks where the quasi Fermi levels actually cross over the, um, the, junk, uh, the, the band edges. So here, now you see how the quasi Fermi levels start to hug uh, the valence band edge and the conduction band edge in the depletion region because there is hardly any generation of, of carriers. And uh, that's quite different than what you might see in some textbooks where this um, here is really extended out into the, the bulk of the uh, valence band and uh, the, the bulk of the conduction band. So. So you can have real physics, uh, real recombination rates. And on the IV curves in this part of device, it doesn't, doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Um, oh, let's see. 
Yeah, I have the forward bias result here. Let me clear this one out. And now I have the three different um, reverse biases. And depending on the recombination generation you have in here, you have quite a quite a difference in uh, in the current. So if you don't have generation in the depletion region, there's very little reverse current. If it's um, very large, uh, very fast, uh, then you have a lot of generation, and you have actually a, quite a bit of reverse current. So, so this kind of gives you a flavor of what can be done in PN Junction Lab. And uh, so it's twenty minutes or so. I would like to open the floor for any questions that you might have, and I'll try, to the best of my knowledge, of course, try to answer them. Ah. That's a very good question. Any limitations on temperature for the simulation? Um, temperature is, of course, a, an important thing. You can change the temperature here. We typically run room temperature 300 Kelvin. Uh, there's a couple of presets. You can put in um, different temperatures for sure. Uh, let me see. I believe there is a lower limit here in this tool, yeah, 77 is the lowest limit in this tool. And that has a little bit to do with convergence of drift diffusion and carrier and distributions, et cetera. Um, Padre by itself under the hood might do lower temperatures, if that is a critical more research you need, but 77 Kelvin can be run. And I'll just run it here in reverse bias and see what happens there. So you clearly see that the Fermi levels are different. It's 77 versus 300. Um, and let's see, IV characteristics. They look. Still on the, yeah. Hold on, what is the problem? I probably need to clear some of the, the previous results. So let me zoom in here. Yeah, on the reverse bias, it seems almost the same, which kind of makes sense because you're going against the, uh, a big barrier and recombination generation shouldn't depend a whole lot on that. And if I remember right, Oh, I have basically turned off recombination generation. So, so these curves should look the same, and that makes somewhat sense. Um, does that answer the question, or should I explore some other temperature and and actually put in? Can put in one B minus twelve as a as a fast one B minus twelve and see what happens there. That's the really fast. But again, in reverse bias, I don't expect to, much to change, but in forward bias, we, that would be interesting because the thermionic piece is gonna be quite different. So why don't I pull up this guy here? I'm gonna clear it. I'm gonna make it symmetric just for argument's sake. See. And run this. Well, it's going to pull up the same result. And I'm going to go in and change the temperature to 77, simulate that in forward bias. Now, and again, the Fermi levels look should look quite different. Well, the band edge differences to the Fermi level. Uh, this tool may also comprehend different band gaps as a function of bias. So let's see. Uh, might be a small difference, but that's that's not really the, the essential thing. The essential thing is the rather different Fermi level. Here for 77 Kelvin, the Fermi level is much closer to the band edge. 
under this doping in order to cre uh, create charge neutrality and then we can look at the IV characteristics and they should be rather different so different that you might want to put that on a logarithmic scale to control both and there's convergence issues here interesting interesting seems like there is very little current flowing at 77 kelvin for this uh, device so let's look at the bandage at 77 kelvin yeah and this barrier is huge still um and you can see that the quasi fermi levels really extend out all the way here so not totally surprising that there is very little forward current uh, in this 77 Kelvin device. Does that answer the question? So there's another one. Um, does it work at 3 Kelvin and can I choose silicon carbide? So uh, we have different materials, but silicon carbide is not in this list. Um, and as I mentioned, temperature is limited uh, to 77. So if I try uh, 76, the tool will complain the minimum is 77. But, but, so what you can do is go to a tool. And this is, again, right, this is uh, only drift diffusion. So you can launch this Padre tool and i haven't done this for a while um, but there's an example here of this pn diode this is now you need to read this uh, padre input deck and the question now is if i can find so here are the uh the taus the uh, recombination rates here are the various regions i wonder if i can see temperature in here somewhere look i'm going a little bit on thin ice here it's always good to do that silicon so you can put in different material i am not sure if um it comprehends silicon carbide and we would have to look in the documentation for the tool and i don't see 300 the number 300 here which would mean the temperature must be somewhere in here i would think or it has a i'll try trivial. so i have to pass on that and have to maybe get you back and post something into the group whether or not uh, i can set the temperature here well let me go back um here we can do this so the input deck it is not the full one output log should have the input deck so now i can see what i ran somewhere i should see 77 kelvin because that's not a default value so silicon I don't see it right now. I'll I'll dig into that. Now I'm I'm curious to what can be done. Region should be, I presume, under the material. I don't speak Padre, I speak Nemo, which is a quantum tool we developed in my group. I uh, I'll I'll look into this. So lower temperature, I'm not sure. Oh, line twenty-five. Ah, got it. No, um, ah, got it. Models, SRH, great. So let's see, temperature models colon temperature equals. Okay, so let's try that. Where did my, so let's see. Let's see models. Hey, look at this. I should have just looked further. So let's run, uh, let me just do 77 first. Hmm. 
now I get a the line number. Okay, so doping. Uh, this is for two biases. There was one high bias, uh, no bias, uh, high bias. And let's see what happens when you do four. My experience is that meshing of temperatures can be a challenge. So let's see what it does. But maybe in drift diffusion, it's not so painful. Program aborted. Look at that. Not very surprising. So, no. Let's see what it's plotting. Yeah, it doesn't plot anything for, <clears throat> for that being so small. So, I'm sorry. Doesn't look like Padre is very uh, cold temperature friendly. Um, for reverse biases, tunneling enabled within the code. Uh, I would have to see what the models are. Um, I'm not sure they have tunneling in Padre. We would have to look into the tool. I don't think it's enabled per se. Either way, I have not run it. Oh, in um, yeah, of course, in in this tool, I have not run it to an extreme where I would see like Zener tunneling, etc., for very high doping. Um, but it has this um, breakdown. We we can play with this and just see what happens in the tool set. I don't know the answer offhand, so we would. I would say clear all and make this more normal, 1e e minus 10, 1e e minus 10. But then I would make this uh, very heavily doped, say 1e e 18, 1e e 18, and um, probably need to some more nodes to resolve that better. And let's see what happens. I was running this in forward bias here, right? So, oh, but what temperature? Did I change that back to 300? I don't remember. <clears throat> Either way, it's running right now. Yeah, so bandage diagram. So here you would, in a bandage diagram like that, you definitely would want to, uh, would expect um, some tunneling. Let me make this, clear this out and actually resolve this better. Let me make this say, um, five microns five microns and let's see what um, this tool does on such uh, very sharp doping you might want to put in some intrinsic layer a little bit to separate it a little bit so let's see and yes um, Padre syntax is similar to Silvaco, and we're actually beginning to work with Silvaco to host their tools on NanoHub. So we'll embed these tools in these app-like tools, and we'll also host uh, Abacus, um, Silvaco tools, their um, tool suite on NanoHub as, as well. So here we go. Yeah, so the band edges here seem much better resolved. And you would think that there is um, that there is um, tunneling here. Let's see if we can see that in the IV curve. It's not doesn't look like it. So we don't see really uh, a strong turn on, right? No Zener turn on, at least in this bias. So I presume one would have to turn on this uh, band to band tunneling if it exists in Padre. 
Gerhard, I think we might have scrolled past a couple of questions. Um, there's one, may I ask if this tool can simulate Asaki diode scenarios? Yeah, so an Asaki diode would be a tunneling uh, effect, tunneling diode, right? Um, yeah, so this would be a tunneling question as well, and I sort of addressed that. Um, so I'm pulling up the Padre manual and <clears throat> on, on another screen right now, and I want to see if I find tunneling. In there's four mentions. C tunnel band to band tunneling coefficients seem to exist in uh, Padre. So in principle, at least you can run it in Padre, and one could general. Ah, oh, look at this tunneling. So. Oh, why is it? Oh, I see. I went to. I turn off full screen mode on this. Exit full screen. Good. So I just pulled up the, the documentation on uh, tunneling. So in principle, this could be a cool extension I could imagine doing for PN Junction Lab, so you can turn on tunneling equals true. And there is, uh, I believe, impact is um, already turned on. Um, <clears throat> and then here's temperature equals some number. We just entered that. So, yeah, so you can you can do quite a bit here. And I can, yeah, so, so yes, you can do it, but in PN Junction Lab, it's not turned on, but that is something we can probably turn on reasonably easily. I hope that answers the question. I, I see the last one. How do you switch from the non-op tools to the other something proxy non-op? Um, basically, I can answer this. Um, what happens is when, uh, these newer tools are launched, they launch in a new window. Um, and um, uh, they come up as proxy nano hub. You don't want to, you don't want to memorize these things. These are instances of Jupyter notebooks. So you don't want to uh, mark them. If you ever want to go back to a simulation you staged, you can go into your um, into your dashboard when you're logged in and you can see all the tools that you have launched so so here is um for example padre that are launched so this really has a list of all the tools that are running and even if i close this browser i can go back to them from another browser or another machine i can even share these tools with other users uh, so you don't want to use these proxy terms as as links etc um they just are sort of temporary links now uh there was another question that was they're asking if you can comment on one or two homework questions that you feel are important for students to grasp fundamental aspects of pn junctions based on this tool i see um yes so It depends on undergrad and grad. Uh, I would just uh, right now refer you to here's the assembly. If we go to the faculty page, homeworks. Um, so here's P and Junction Lab that, and there is a couple of assignments uh, that deal with graded junctions, PIN diode. Um, basic operation i i would suggest i mean you can pull these out some of them are uh, more extensive that they relate to a the <coughs> drift diffusion equation uh, others uh, are 
uh, then directly linked to the simulation tool I could pull out one that I'm using in my class. I would I would say um, here's a homework on depletion region. Mark Lundstrom did that quite a while ago. So there should be um, should launch any second. So this is a word document. There we go. So depletion versus exact solution of a PN junction. So this would be an example of where you can have the students calculate something analytically and then repeat this um, on, on PN junction lab. Makes sense. Hopefully that, that is useful. What's the upper temperature limit? Uh, Certainly, it has a preset of 400. I'm not sure I would want to go much higher. Shot key junctions. Um, no, we don't have, I think, a really good shot key junction visualization or tool that I'm aware of. But there is a couple of tools that, certainly a bunch of tools that I don't know about. No, 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 there's lectures on it, but I can't find, oh, geez. there's tools on a Schottky bearer carbon nanotube, but I don't think that's what you want. You're still sharing your Word document, Gerhard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glancing through my, uh, I just did a Google search. Um, There's um, Schottky diode as a tag, but I am not sure that we have a tool that goes with it. Any other questions? Yeah, we still have a few up above. Um, okay, I'm going to scroll through there real quick. Elton at 630, I think, is the... The next question that needs answered. Right. So the last one, how do you get the Padre manual? I Googled it, NanoHub Padre manual. And then you, you'll you'll get it. Oh, and the from the Padre tool slash Padre, uh, there's a, a link to the manual. Um so uh, for Padre is not limited to Boltzmann statistics. So it, it does do the full integral properly, so it can deal with degenerate semiconductors, etc. So I, so that is definitely the case. Um, can we simulate high injection condition? I would think so. I mean, for a PN junction, you mean on the on the high bias, correct? Krishna, do you mean on the high bias? Yeah, I think so. Right, so. So you you do see um, nonlinear band edge effects, etc. At where is my here? So this is reverse bias, somewhere at a forward bias. So let me clear this. Let me go back to seventy seven. I can answer the. 500 Kelvin, let's see. It does 500 Kelvin. I don't know how I trust those results, but this is good. Structure, symmetric. And um, let's make it longer. And we should see much more of a uh, voltage drop. In the in the device under under these low doping conditions, so 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 really you can see uh, the resistive drop for sure, and this um, 
is that what you mean by high injection or do you want to see some other specific uh, phenomena or just a non-ideality of the IV or okay yeah if, if there's no follow-up all right um we do have another question that come that came in yeah can we simulate position dependent doping um in the padre uh tool yes uh here the only thing you can do is you can put in an intrinsic region um of certain length say uh, say 0.5 and put in some 40 nodes and then you can um, put in some p-type dope and or n-type dope and etc um to to kind of model this but you cannot really do a um an honest to goodness say profile of a doping in this in this app in this app so i can compare these ids with the intrinsic region and uh, let's see what the, <clears throat> that charge density would look like so here is the net charge density for this intrinsic p and you do see some interesting uh, pile up of charge different behavior but because the the negative charge is of course leaking in on the other side but um um not per se uh, say um, a, a graded um doping profile etc that can be done in padre but for the uh teaching tool uh we didn't implement that any other questions if not it's uh, seven o'clock we can close down the meeting so i'd say i thank everybody for um participating hopefully some answers uh, were given um and i hope uh, i'll see you see you again um maybe next week and i'll be talking about um, band structure at the time then so thank you <laughs>